Hey guys, Stake here for Games Defined and this tutorial is going to be on cell shading or toon shading, whatever you want to call it. It's pretty much the same thing. So if you're following along, all I want you to do is create a plane like you see here and put a teapot on it because that's the best example shape. Uh, I've just got my scale factor thing set to 100 so that as you can see when I render it you can't see the edges. I've also got my uh, renderer set to mental ray. You don't have to, I've just got it set to that anyway. So let's get started. The first thing we want to do is open up the material editor, which is M on the keyboard, or the, yeah, that button right there. Then what we need to do is in fact there's two methods to do this I'll, I'll go through them both so the first thing we're going to do is go to diffuse and press the little box next to it and you want to select fall off but first let's uh, we forgot a step change the self illumination all the way up to 100 so that's fall you don't want color just keep that unticked and then go back into the fall off parameters now what you want to do is change the fall off type to shadow light and that that will allow the uh, material to be affected by light so then you want to come down to mix curve and you see this straight line this uh, this is pretty much the gradient that you see below so if we if we make that higher it goes to the first well the last color actually yeah so it blends in pretty perfect so what we want to do is have this solid line between the two so there's no gray it's just solid black then solid white to do that you come to this add point button and add two points wherever you want just because we're going to be moving them so then come back to the move tool and you need you want to select the first one drag it right to the bottom and get it around the middle if you can it doesn't matter if not and then grab the second one do it right to the top and make sure it's a straight line coming down to connect to the other point and you should see this now what we want to do is drag that onto the teapot and simply render which is F9 So this is the uh, the finished product and I'll show you what I mean by the material being affected by light. So if we come to uh, light standard, just use a target direct and drag it out. I have the uh, hotspot beam larger than default. Uh, you can change it in the directional parameters. But now if we, if we uh, we render. Oh God, you you see absolutely nothing. Okay, that's probably why I have this set up. So if, let's move it to the actual model. It might help. So now, if we actually render this one you'll see the black is the shadow and the white is where the light is shining first what we actually want to do is enable shadows there we go again it looks absolutely no different I don't know why it's doing that you you don't have this problem you, you probably wouldn't have this problem but yeah anyway if we move the light to say here and then render it again you have a completely different image so let's just get rid of this boring black and white and have a nice blue just copy that to the bottom copy and then change the top one to be darker for the shadow and now if we render it again look at that much nicer to look at already so that's the first method so I'm, I 
don't really want that light anymore so I'm just going to delete it and then go to a new empty slot and you want to come up to standard click that and then click ink and paint so the paint which is the blue one if we drag it on that is the actual color the paint and the ink is the outline so if we just uncheck that and render this I'll show you what it looks like this is what it looks like so you can change the uh, shaded kind of um, options so we put that down to 20 and render it see what happens kind of absolutely nothing so <laughs> so we'll just uh, you can this is the obviously the paint color so you can have it lighter dark you know pick whatever you want so we're just going to add uh, the outline now so I'll show you what it looks like first this is what it looks like it is pretty cool so the ink quality is basically the quality of the outline so it's not as jagged so the max you can have is three which takes a tiny bit longer to render but it looks a lot better as you can see uh, you can change the width so let's have oh god no let's have 0 0.5 render that as you can see it looks a lot different already like that uh, let's just have it at one if you do variable width some of the geometry may have thicker lines so this is where the max comes in on ours the you know the all the lines are exactly the same so it doesn't really affect this model but so I'll show you anyway just I've set the max to four so you can see that it doesn't really make any difference to, to this model but if we uh, if we have a more complex model like this one then when I render it I'll you can see as you can see here already these lines are a lot thicker uh, you've got this thicker line here um, this one big example right here and then you have your thinner lines all the way around so yeah that is what the uh, minimum and maximum kind of thing looks like I'll just quickly show you what the underlap looks like So that is basically uh, two methods of cell shading slash tune shading, again whatever you want to call it. Um, this is my first tutorial af in a, you know, after a, a while so I'm, uh, I could really use some ideas but I'm sure they'll come to me. Uh, thanks for watching and I will see you Saturday for a quick tip.